Hi everyone, my name's Joe and I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today's video is going to be looking at the uh, electronic struts of the 3000 GT, GTO and Dodge Stealth. Now there's been an awful lot of debate and talk on these uh, items, originally made by KYB in Japan um, for Mitsubishi and uh, they come in electronic and non-electronic versions. Now the one that we're primarily interested in is the electronic version because this strut has now been discontinued for some time. They're starting to fail. The alternatives are extremely expensive and of course if you're replacing one you've got to replace a whole set. Now if you're anything like me I'm not interested in aftermarket. As my channel says, it's a restoration channel about keeping these cars as beautiful as they were the day they left the factory and completely stock. Now, the only way we can do that with a discontinued part is to have them remade, which is huge expense. I have found a company that's prepared to make them for us, but the, the costs are just astronomical for the initial production run. And the other alternative is to repair them. Now, in today's video, I was hoping to do a full strip down and rebuild, fitting brand new oil seals, uh, showing you how to fault find the electronic parts, um, and basically put the whole thing back together like new again. Now, I had that plan for so long and was so looking forward to showing something like that until... Uh, Someone on my uh, YouTube channel, um, who was it, Jeff, screen name Useless Pickles, um, told me about a couple of other people that perhaps are a little bit more knowledgeable than me. So I'd like to give credit to them. I have now watched their videos or read their texts. So we've got a robotics engineer who was on the 3SI forum who reminded us or told us that um, KYB have informed him that there should be nitrogen gas inside here. Now, I've questioned this for quite a long while because I've probably opened up 30 or so of these now, including a couple of brand new ones, and no pressure came out. Now, I want to make sure that when I produce a video, I always give the most up-to-date and accurate information I can. And until I can confirm that information, not that I'm questioning uh, the robotics engineer, I'm more questioning is the information that he was given correct. Until I can confirm that information 100% I'm not prepared to go with the full length video that I wanted to do on these struts. All I'm going to do today is cover the part that I haven't seen anyone else cover. I also want to give credit to Far North Racing. Um, they did an excellent video that I've watched um, describing how the strut works. There is a few bits that I want to add to that in the future, namely the electronics, how to remove them without damage, and how to repair them and fault find them. All of these bits can be repaired. There is nothing on this strut that is so unique that we cannot repair them. All we're left with is the question of the nitrogen gas, what pressure, and how to install it. And I'm sure that information is going to be forthcoming pretty soon. So for today, the bit I want to cover is the bit that I've not seen in any videos. And I've searched far and wide uh, with Google for ideas on how to get these apart, hoping that someone else has already covered it. But I've seen everything from the most horrendous tools being used and totally destroying the strut to angle grinders and die grinders and mini grinders and cutters opening up the top. The problem with these methods is the strut is almost entirely destroyed once you start cutting the metal seals. So I found a way some time ago of actually opening this up with little or no damage and being able to then reseal the strut as though it had just come out the factory. Now, for those of you that are familiar with my channel, you will know that I'm um, very drawn towards jobs for the man at home. I don't like to produce commercial videos. I don't like to use specialist tools because most of my viewers will be people at home that want to have a go at doing these things themselves. So even though I have asked for a special tool to be made to do this job and that tool will be available to buy on my forum, 
the way we're going to do it today is going to use very very cheap basic tools that you have either got in your shed already or you can just pop down the shop and uh, buy the tools for next to nothing so let's have a look at those tools first one and probably the most important one is an 18 inch or 45 centimeter um, tire lever now these are readily available this one's still got the price ticket on it it was two pound fifty so around three dollars um, and this is the main tool you're going to need for today's work second one you're going to need is a little block of metal um, you'll see what it's for it doesn't have to be this shape or size once you see what it's for you can decide for yourself what you've got lying around that you can use then you're going to need a hammer or mallet or something similar to knock onto the piece of metal again once you see what we're going to do with it you can pick on whatever's best for you uh, then you're going to need a piece of tubing now this piece of tubing needs to be a, a couple of millimeters thick and it needs to fit precisely around the neck of the strut and you're going to see where that goes when we start the work but the measurement is very very important uh, and finally a jug to put the oil in hopefully you've still got some oil left in the strut if all the oil's gone and it's full of air chances are it's all corroded inside but I've never yet seen one quite that bad that can't be repaired so moving on to doing the job itself what we're going to do first of all I think is take this cap off here it doesn't really serve that much of a purpose other than to make the end look clean it's not a dust cap or anything muck still gets inside um, maybe it's just to give a little bit of strength around the neck to hold the seal in tight because it's quite a thin walled strut so we're going to get that off first and again because this is a job for the man at home I know when uh, Far North Racing did it he made a special tool to go around the neck and prise it off but it really is on quite simply and we can take it off quite easily so to do this we need the block of metal and a hammer and because my poor old knees I'm going to kneel on a foam mat as well so we're going to go down here now this will knock off quite easily but we don't want to damage the strut I've also not put the strut in a vise for a reason and that again is because the wall is quite thin and easily damaged if you do it up too tight you should be able to just put this on the floor um, something soft to protect it and just tap it off this way let's just hope it works today oh I missed how easy was that no specialist tools required no damage to the strut and now you can see the next piece how the seal is held in now for the next piece I'm going to show you a little picture and give you a little lesson now I'm not a metal specialist nor am I a specialist in hydraulics so my information is just stuff that I've picked up over the years from other people or from other YouTube channels so if we look at the top of the strut here you'll see the metal has been bent over in one two three four five places so I've represented that on this basic drawing here and if you take one of these places here and blow it up to something like this this is the bit I need to explain to you we're going to be prizing the lip upwards but with metal whenever you bend metal it actually stretches it and we don't want the metal to stretch because it's easy to stretch but very difficult to shrink back to its original shape now we're going to be using this pry bar to lever up those little lips but if you lever in the middle right here what's going to happen is it's going to stretch that piece in further which is fine until you then want to move up the corners and as you bend up this corner it's then going to want to push this bit further out here and now we've got multiple stretches in the metal very very difficult to shrink so what we're going to do instead is we're going to pry on the corner here and here 
Once those two corners come up, the middle bit will fall into place, hopefully. So here's where your metal ring comes in, and this needs to be as tight as possible to this section of the neck. Now this is actually cut from an old TV stand I had laying around. Um, in an ideal world, you need to pop down to your local engineering shop and see if they've got a sleeve that's a really tight fit onto there, but not so tight as you can't get it off. You're going to slide it over the top. Now, as you can see, this is not a very tight one. I've just used this for a demonstration. It's the only piece I had laying around. And as I said, I'm having a special tool made that's going to clamp around the neck and allow you to both pry the lips open and then reseal them after. So now this can be a bit of a picky job and it can also be a time consuming job. But the more time you spend, the more accurately you're going to get this open. I have slightly filed the tip here to better make, match the shape around the neck. And also, some of you may be concerned about prying onto this metal. This is probably the hardest steel that I have ever encountered. I have never ever managed to mark it in any way at all. I'm not saying you couldn't mark it, I'm saying I have never managed to mark it and I've used this technique lots and lots of times. So we're going to get under the neck, uh, the piece of the lip there and we're going to try, let's just hope I don't slip. No, I'm going to have to put this on the floor, sorry. This isn't going to happen quickly. Not unless you spend the time to make the tool better than me. Little bit at a time, move around until you get the lovely perfect round shape that it should be. As you can see, there's not a single mark on that neck at all. It's absolutely perfect. And we've now got a near perfect round shape there. It's not quite there yet. I'm just going to do a few more. And I can absolutely guarantee you the more time you spend on this, the more perfect that will be. You don't want to go past the original point. Just get it level and nice and round. So there we go. Now, as you see, this is quite time consuming. So I'm going to cut the video at this point while I do the other four. And then we'll come back to the video. Okay, I think we've got it evenly all the way around. Now at this point, I'm actually quite surprised that the seal itself is not actually in there as tight as you might expect. And quite often, just by pulling up on the tube, releases that immediately. Now that could be because there's been a slight deformation of the neck because this isn't a perfect tight fitting tube but we'll find that out when I have the, uh, the tools uh, machine to a perfect size. Either way, this way gets it open without any damage to the neck and makes it easy to repair. Now, as far as the oil goes, I have sent some away for analysis to find out exactly what the viscosity is, but I've had pretty good success with using a five weight or 10 weight um, motorcycle fork oil. Um, it seems to be the same viscosity and seems to do the job beautifully. As far as the volume goes, the most I've ever measured is 250 mils, and that was from a brand new strut. Whether that is an accurate measurement in all of them or not, or whether that was slightly more or slightly less than normal, I don't know. But whenever I've reused 250 mil, it seems to have about the same pressure as a brand new strut. 
Now oil will continue to leak out of the tube, so make sure you put that somewhere safe. You can see it pouring out now. And we can measure how much is in this one. Not a lot, so it's obviously lost quite a lot of its oil. From this point, I now send them away for powder coating. They'll uh, use a sandblaster to strip all the old muck and paint off. And they come back beautiful, like brand new struts when they're done. We'll put that out of the way. And by moving this up and down, you can get some more oil out quite quickly and easily. Uh, here we go, now the levels are going up a bit. I thought that had lost rather a lot more than normal. So this is now a time consuming process trying to drain all of the oil out of the main tube. Now, I don't really want to go on any further at this point. This was purely a method of getting the strut open without any damage um, and making the strut reusable. For those of you that want to do the same as me and just use normal air pressure and motorcycle fork oil, you can do that right now. These seals, as far as I could find, are not available anywhere, right? To get um, N -O N OK, is it? And okay to remanufacture the original seals for me. If you've got the money, you can do the same as me. They don't manufacture one or two. You have to buy a very large volume. Or you can go onto my forum and I'll sell them to you on the forum. Um, so for now, um, that's my contribution towards the repair and future restoration of these struts. I'm hoping someone else will now follow on from this and help out with any future information which at this time seems to be uh, two things. If you want to save me waiting for the oil construction analysis to come back and you already know, please tell someone and I'm sure the information will filter through. Um, and the other thing is the question of the uh, liquid nitrogen, how much to put in there um, to, to get the pressure up to what it should be if there should be liquid nitrogen in there. Because of the virus and everything, traveling is almost impossible. I was hoping to go to Japan myself and get this information, but uh, that can't happen for now. Hopefully this just moves you on one more step towards the final reconstruction of this strut. For now, that's it. I hope you've got something from this. I hope you enjoy the channel and watch some of the other videos. You can request a video, but I'm now asking anyone wanting to request a video to go to my um, forum where there is a section for request a video and I'm happy to do videos for you on anything to do with this car as long as it's a job for the man at home. So for now, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment um, and subscribe. Click on the bell if you're subscribed and you'll get automatic updates on all the future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.